Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Jakoda LE1 laser engraver. Now, before I even do my usual introduction, I have to warn you about the LE1's terrible laser protection. Depending on the position, the plexiglass cover has many holes where reflected laser light can shine through, often right at eye level. Do not buy the LE1 unless you plan on fully enclosing the laser or modifying the cover to minimize openings, and always wear eye protection around this laser. I considered not even publishing this review after seeing this, but I thought I needed to give this warning to anyone considering this laser. With that massive caveat out of the way, let's get started. This Jakoda LE1 was sent to me for review by MadeTheBest.com. As with all my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, but my videos do have affiliate links in the description which help support my channel. And all of my opinions are my own after using this laser for the last month. So let's get into it. The Jakoda LE1 is a 10 watt blue diode laser engraver with an engraving area of 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters. It uses a 455 nanometer wavelength laser to cut and engrave a variety of materials. The laser module has a fan at the top which blows down through the module, cooling the lasers and helping blow away the smoke. The protective cover is made out of red plexiglass and can be adjusted using two thumb screws. It has a cutout for the built-in air assist nozzle. As mentioned before, that cutout allows the laser light to shine right through, depending on the position. At the very top of the laser module is an integrated flame detector, which triggers an audible alarm when it detects open flames. The laser is mounted off-sensor in the laser module though, which makes it hard to sensor the start of a cut. You simply can't just eyeball the middle of the module, you have to estimate based on the position of the air assist nozzle. The laser module is mounted to a lead screw, which is used to focus the laser. They include a focusing tool, with markings indicating the thickness of the material you want to cut. Place the tool on the material, and adjust the knob to move the laser until the focusing arm meets the thickness marking on the tool. Then you can lock the laser into place. The feel of the lead screw is very nice, but I do not like needing to keep track of a focusing tool. They only provide one, so if you lose it, you are out of luck. The laser is mounted on the X and Y axis gantry. Both axes are belt driven, and the X axis driven by a single stepper motor, and the Y axis having two stepper motors, one on either side. The X axis has an integrated belt tension adjuster, but the Y axis belts are locked into place with set screws. Both axes use drag chains to protect the cables. I think they are an elegant solution to cable management. The frame itself is made out of aluminum extrusions, and is raised from the workbench by legs in the four corners. These legs have a very thin contact area, with no grip surfaces on the bare metal. The lack of grip combined with the light weight of the machine makes it very easy to slide the laser on the workbench. The legs do have holes where you can add brackets to secure it to the workbench though. Moving to the front of the laser, we find the control box, which contains the power input, USB input, SD card slot, and emergency stop latch. It is always good to see an emergency stop latch, which immediately cuts all power to the laser. The brains of the laser is a MakerBase MKS LTS version 1.1 control board, which I actually cannot find the specifics of. The integrated stepper drivers are very quiet, however, making movements nearly silent. I have a few optional accessories for the laser here. First is the honeycomb working panel set, consisting of an aluminum honeycomb which sits on top of an aluminum sheet. This honeycomb surface is excellent. It does a great job of supporting materials and allows for cuts while dissipating the laser energy before it can damage your workbench. It also allows for small cut pieces to fall through, making cleanup easy. I also have the air assist compressor. The air hose was already ran through the cable drag chains, so all I had to do was to connect the hose to the compressor and turn it on. It is manually controlled with a knob on the front, which controls the airspeed. I was surprised with how quiet the compressor is. It is not nearly as jarring to be around as other error assists that I've experienced. Finally, I have the Jakoda's rotary attachments. This adjustable pair of rollers plugs into the Y-axis motor cable and can enable engraving on smooth round objects. The rollers can be adjusted to a number of positions allowing for a large range of object diameters. The instructions were a little unclear as to the light burn settings to use, but with a little trial and error, these are the settings that I determined. It also comes with a set of end stop rollers to allow for support for longer objects. The Jakoda LE1 is a kit requiring full assembly. Only the control box and drag chains come pre 
assembled. Everything else is assembled by you, screw by screw. Jakoda does include a very extensive 25-step full-colored instruction manual, which does a decent job of walking you through the process. Apparently, there is also a full assembly video on the included SD card. However, my machine did not include an SD card that I could find. I'll skip over the assembly here, but it did take me about two hours to assemble. If you have less experience, I could easily see it taking twice as long. As for the software, the Jakota LE1 can use Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. Laser Gerbil is free to use, while Lightburn requires a license, but has a trial version if you want to give it a try. I used Lightburn for all of my tests. The SD card that I was missing includes a Lightburn machine config, but Jakota's support was kind enough to email me a copy. With the config, it was easy to connect and control the laser via USB. So let's take a look at how well the Jakota LE1 cuts and engraves. The LE1 does a great job of cutting and engraving on wood. It cuts through a quarter inch basswood in a single pass at at least 300 millimeters a minute, which is the quickest 10 watt laser that I've reviewed so far. Photos engrave with very nice contrast, and it cuts through birch plywood with ease. All good showing with wood. It engraved these slate coasters with ease. The off-center laser point made it hard to position the design in the middle of the coasters, however. This leather bracelet starts to show one of the drawbacks with the air assist design. Because the air is blown from one direction, soot tends to collect in that direction. You can see black marks left by the air assist on the edges of this leather bracelet. While the engraving itself is nice, the darkening is disappointing. Now to cover some of the problems that I have with the LE1. Jakota's marketing is just false. They have a picture on the listings, but three out of the four of them are just wrong. While it does have an audible flame detection, it doesn't stop the cut. Detect flames and instant stop are two different unconnected features. They also say it has four boundaries covered by limits, but there are only two limit switches for the minimums, no maximum limit switches. And it says that it has move slash tip instant stop, which I would assume means that it should automatically stop if it gets bumped. If it does have that, I could not get it to trigger. Those are very misleading. So in conclusion, the LE1 leaves a lot to be desired. The laser itself is very powerful for a 10 watt diode laser, and the motion of the laser is quiet and smooth. However, the safety aspects alone make me not want to recommend this laser. The laser cover has too many holes, making it easy to reflect stray lights into nearby users' eyes. It's also too easy to move the laser, and there is no bump protection that I could trigger. It is a kit that you have to assemble yourself, but I've yet to see that mentioned in any of the listings. I could recommend the air assist, rotary attachment, and honeycomb work surfaces though. Those all worked as advertised and could be used on any other brand of lasers as well. The Jakota LE1 sells for 500 US dollars, with the air assist, rotary attachments, and honeycomb table selling for $90, $100, and $60 respectively. $500 is the cheapest 10 watt laser that I've seen. If you choose to go with the LE1, just know what you're getting yourself into. So thank you all for watching my review of the Jakota LE1. If you are in the market for 10 watt diode lasers, why not check out my reviews of the Acer P10 or the Xtools D1 Pro. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming reviews. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.